In a recent consulting assignment, I was working with a lot of Excel files. They were large and they had very nasty data. And I had to clean the data before I could put the data into Power BI. Now, turns out when you connect the data through Excel into Power Query and you have to work on a large data from Excel and the data transformations are also pretty complex, the performance is going to be absolutely terrible. How did I solve the problem? I converted all of those Excel files into CSV files and the performance skyrocketed. Now, I thought maybe I'll just share the idea with a couple of people on Twitter and on LinkedIn. People seem to like it too much. I believe a lot of people are facing such problems. In this particular video, I'll share a nifty Python script to convert all of those Excel files automatically into CSV files. Let's go. All right, people working with two simple Excel files here. Let me take two minutes to explain you the data and then I will talk about the construct in which I will write the script, the logic part of it. Take a look. We have two simple Excel files in here. We have the East Excel file and we have the West Excel file. Each of these Excel files could possibly contain multiple sheets and each sheet should be converted into its own CSV. Now, it may be a possibility that you don't have um, one Excel file and multiple sheets within that. You could just have a single Excel file and one sheet within it. But if that is a scenario, you could possibly use this. Even if you don't have an Excel file with multiple sheets, the code is going to still work just okay. Now, please take a look. In the first Excel file, which is the East Excel file, I have three sheets. We have Jan, Feb and March. The data structure is the same. It doesn't matter whatever be the data structure. I'm just going to convert whatever data do we have into a CSV. Now note that a CSV can just contain one sheet. You can't really have multiple sheets within a CSV. Take a look in the other Excel file that we have. We again have two different sheets. We have Jan sheet and the Feb sheet. Now, what is the logic that I'm going to follow to be able to solve this particular problem? It's very, very simple. All that I'm going to do is using Python, I will step inside this particular folder. That's part one. Once I step inside this particular folder, then I'm going to take a look at every single Excel file, not any other file, just Excel file. Once I pick up, this is going to be a, like a loop. So I loop through every single Excel file. I pick up the file and within that file, I take a look at the name of the sheet. That means what sheets do you have? Convert Jan into a CSV, convert Feb into a CSV and convert March into a CSV. Because to avoid any name conflict, I'm also going to concatenate the name of the Excel file, which is right here to the name of the sheet so that I probably just get the all the sheets which are absolutely unique. All right, and that's going to be the solution. Let's just jump over to Python and start to solve this problem. All right, people, I'm here in Visual Studio Code. I'm assuming that you have some sort of editor to be able to write the code into your computer. I'm also assuming that you have certain packages and modules installed and you have the bare essential working knowledge of Python. My job is not to really teach you Python here. I am learning myself and I'm barely getting at a level where I can make workable solutions. So it's going to be an exploratory process for the both of us. Please take a look. The first thing that I do is after I open the Visual Studio code, I'm going to create a new file in here and I'm just going to maybe create a new file. I will save the file in the same directory where my Excel files are kept. So I'm just going to click right here and say Control S to save it. And in the same folder, I'm going to call this as Excel to CSV. And I'm just going to maybe call this as a Python file. So right here, save it. And the file has been saved. Now, if you take a look at the folder on the right hand side, uh, you can see that we have the Python file added right here. Currently, the file is blank. Let's just start to write some script in that file. All right. So the way that I would want to start is that I would want to step inside the folder and I want to take a look at all the files in the folder, not all the files, but only Excel files that I would want to work with. To be able to do that, I'm going to start to write something like an import and I will import the OS module, which is actually going to help me to take a look at the contents of the directory. I'm also going to import pandas that I will use it later as PD. And let's just declare a path. That means I have to tell Python that where to look for the files. And I'm just going to maybe put an equals to sign, come right here, copy this particular path and paste that right here. I'm also going to make sure that the subfolders are demarcated by a double slash and not a single one. That's how the way it works here. All right. Now, once I have put in the path, I would want to take a look at what contents or files are there in that path. So I'm going to use a, like a function. Let's just declare a variable first. So I'm just going to say that all the files that you get, you're going to store that files in the variable called files. And I'm going to use a simple function called a list directory to be able to get the list of the files which are there in that path. So I'm just going to feed the path right here. And let me just see the print of this. Let me just kind of call the interim output and take a look at what is the result that I'm getting as of now. So I will call the print command 
and I'm just gonna say, hey, why don't you try to print the files variable and take a look at all the files which are there in this particular path. I'm just gonna maybe say run, run without the debugging. And you can see that at the bottom here, it gives me that we have Excel file. There is a Python file, which we are currently working on. There is a West file, and these are two temporary files that we cannot see. Probably these files are hidden. That's totally okay. The next thing that I would want to do is, I would want to create a little loop inside of this particular folder, take a look at every single file and only pick up to start to work with that file if that happens to be an Excel file. If it's not an Excel file, I would like to drop it, right? So how do I actually create that little for loop? I'm gonna go ahead and start to write a little for here. So I'm gonna say for each file in files, this is going to be a single S, each file in files. Then I'm gonna say something like, hey, why don't you actually check uh, if the each file dot let's say end with the extension which is dot x lsx then i would want you to go ahead and print the name of the file right so let's just take a look uh, this seems to be right i'm just going to click on run run without the debug and this only gives me the names of the two files which is east and west so far it seems to do the right thing so now let's just go and continue this and start to step inside of that file and start to grab the data of the sheet and convert that into a csv all right, now what we're going to do is we're going to pick up the names of the Excel files, which is nothing but a text. And from that, we will start to read the data within that Excel file. What we have been able to get is just a piece of text. East.xlsx is nothing but a text. We need to convert that text into a real Excel file, which contains the three sheet data. So how do I do that? I'm gonna go ahead and let's just comment that out, maybe kill that. And I'm gonna write something like, uh, Excel file which is a variable that I'm creating in that variable I will use a Python uh, like a function so pd dot Excel file and I'm gonna say that hey convert that every single name which is this particular name uh, east and west into a real Excel file so uh, these particular names are stored in each file so I'm just gonna maybe reference each file in here and once I actually get to the Excel file, now I will have the access to the sheet names of the file. Let's just try it out. So I'm just gonna say that Excel file is the file and that file actually gives me the access of the sheet names. And this particular variable is going to be stored in let's say another variable called let's say sheets. So I'm just gonna maybe write sheets and that is going to be my variable. So I'm just gonna delete that extra space in here and that's okay. Now, to be able to test this out, have we really gotten the names of the sheets or not? Let's just actually use the print command to print the names of the sheets, right? So I'm just gonna maybe run this, click on run without the debugging. Now, what I should be able to get or see is the names of the sheets. And if you remember, we had five different sheets in two different Excel files. The first one had Jan, Feb and March. And the second Excel file had Jan and Feb. So we have been able to get to the sheet level. Now let's just take the data of the sheet, convert that to a CSV and store it back in this particular folder. All right, now that we have been able to get the names of the sheets, let's just step inside every single sheet and try to grab the data of that particular sheet. How do we do that? I'm gonna get rid of the print command in here and start to declare another for loop. The reason why I'm declaring another for loop is because I would like to step inside every single item of this particular sheets that I have been able to get, which is nothing but an array or a list. And I'd like to pick up the first one and I'd like to get the data of that, pick up the second one, get the data of that, so on and so forth. So I'm just gonna say for each sheet in the sheets that we have been able to create, I'm gonna go ahead and I would like to create another variable called data or sheet data, let's just call that. So sheet data is equals to Excel file. Uh, this is the name of the Excel file. If you remember, we just got the name of the Excel file from here, actually the Excel file from here, not the name. So I can now use a parse function to parse the data of every single sheet. And in here, I'm gonna just use each sheet in here because that is where I have the name of the sheet. All right, now let's just test it out. I am saying that this parse function, once it is taking a look at every single sheet name, which is the Jan sheet, the Feb sheet, and the March sheet, it is storing all of the data in this particular variable called sheet data. Let me just try to print that out. So I'm just gonna maybe hit and enter and try to print nothing but sheet data. And let's just go to run and say run without the debug. And I should now be able to take a look at the data that I was taking a look at in Excel. So we had three columns, date, value, and the product. And we're able to take a look at all of the data of all of the five sheets right here. Now, the problem is that the data as of now is just thrown at the terminal here. 
However, I don't really want to throw the data on the terminal. I actually want to grab the data and write that back into a CSV file. Let's just try to do that. Once we have been able to get the data of every single sheet, now it's the time to take the data and put that in a CSV. There happens to be a very simple function for that. So I'm just going to get rid of the print in here and start to write something like, hey, why don't you take the sheet data, which is the variable that we just created, and please write that to a CSV. Now, this particular function is asking you, hey, once I create the CSV, would you like to give any name to that? And that's going to be the input right here in the brackets. Now, the name obviously for the CSV is going to be dynamic. That means I need to have the file name concatenated that with the sheet name. And I know for the fact that this particular variable contains all the file names and this particular variable contains all the sheet names. Maybe I could just concatenate that. But before I start to concatenate and produce the CSV files, I, however, would like to test it out that are the namings appearing fine or not. Otherwise, I'll just produce a bunch of files, then I'll have to delete it and I'll have to redo a bunch of work. So I'm just going to comment this out for just a quick second and create another variable. And I will try to test out the names of the files which are being created. I'm going to call this as CSV name. And I'm going to say that, hey, this is going to be a concatenation of each file plus plus is the and percent or the concatenation symbol in Python. And I'm going to say, hey, why don't you just maybe write a little dash in between plus once again and each sheet and then plus once again and then a little CSV dot CSV in the end because the extension of the file needs to be dot CSV. And that, that's a little mandate that you'll have to follow. All right. Now I'm going to test this out that are the names appearing the right way or not. So I'm just going to say print. Why don't you print the CSV name? Let me just take a look at that. And I'm just going to run this particular thing. What do I get? I get the names of the files all good. But the only trouble is that since the name of the Excel file, which is this file contains the dot XLSX word, it looks a bit ugly and I don't really want to have that. So I'm just going to create a clean file name and just import it here. So I'm going to go back to my if function. And after the if function has been tested that you're only working with Excel files, I now want to clean up the name of the file. So I'm going to do something like this. I'm going to say clean file name and I'm going to say, hey, why don't you pick up each file and use the replace function. And in the replace function, I will say, hey, I have dot XLSX that I would like to replace it with nothing like a blank string. And that's the clean file name that I will actually input in my name of the file, which is the CSV file. So I'm just going to say clean file name and we're good to go. And let's just try to test it out. So I'm just going to say run, run without the debug. Now this seems to be all good. And this particular uh, print command gets deleted. And now in the sheet data dot CSV, I'm just going to put in the CSV name right here. The other input that I would want to do in this particular thing is that I don't really want to have the index. If you took a look at the output that was being generated by the sheet data, I was getting four columns of data, not three columns of data. However, in my Excel, we had just three columns of data. We had the date, we had the value and we had the product. What is this particular column? This is nothing but the index that is created by Python automatically. I don't want to have the index. So I'm just going to come here and I'm going to say when you're converting the data back to a CSV, just don't have any index. So I'm just going to say index is equals to false. All right, that's good to go. And let's just run this. Let's just see, do we get a bunch of CSVs or not? So I'm just going to go to run, run without debugging. Let's just take a look at the folder and voila. What do we have? We have a bunch of CSVs created right here, which are now created in the folder, usable files that you can now put that into your Power BI and to skyrocket your model's performance. All right, that's been it. Let me know if you have any questions around this and I will try to reply to your questions. I'm not skilled at Python myself, so perhaps your questions are going to help me learn. If you are, however, skilled at Python and if you have a better way of solving this particular problem, please do not hesitate to drop in a comment and show us all a better way of doing this. In the end, I'd like to give a big shout out about my DAX and the Power Query courses, which is where I'm actually skilled at doing a bit of DAX and Power Query. If you're starting out with Power BI, and the journey to learn DAX or Power Query is hard and you would want to master the fundamentals first and then move on to solving more challenging, more difficult problems of your own data, I'd highly recommend that you take a look at my courses. It's going to be super awesome. Thanks so much for sticking around and I will catch you guys in the next one. Cheers and bye.